welcome to this Study Smarter screencast about how to study smarter, not harder, at UWA. To paraphrase Descartes, although you need good study skills to get into UWA, you need to keep developing your skills in order to become a more effective learner and achieve better marks. Always aim higher. This doesn't necessarily mean studying more, just studying smarter. Do you ever feel like you're working really hard but not really making any progress and not doing as well as you'd expected? You might be focusing on the fine detail rather than considering the big picture. This screencast will provide tips on how to use your time more effectively and efficiently to get better marks and make your study experience more enjoyable and less stressful. So here are Study Smarter's three top tips for how to study smarter rather than harder. 1. Activate your learning. 2. Have a smart routine. And 3. Set goals. Let's start with activating your learning. By activating your learning, you'll put effort into every aspect of your study, which will save time in the long run. You'll learn much more effectively and gain maximum benefit from your efforts. We'll focus on three aspects of studying. Reading, attending lectures, and attending tutorials. For example, when you're doing your readings for the week, there are a number of ways that you can activate your learning. Sitting at the desk with your eyes moving across the page and nothing happening in your head is not really reading and highlighting the whole page in green is not helpful either. While reading, there are a number of things that you can note and reflect upon. You need to think about what you're reading. Does it support what you already know? What information conflicts with what you know or believe, and why? What data or sources is the author using to support their view? Is it convincing? Are there any good examples that you can use in your assignment? Is there anything missing? And what kind of language does the author use to persuade you that their view is correct? By thinking about these things, you'll develop a better understanding of the topic and will be able to link it to other information in your unit and from other units. In order to be active in lectures, you need to prepare and compare. Do the readings and try to summarise the key points as a list, mind map or a brief paragraph. Make note of anything you don't really understand. Many lecturers now make their PowerPoint slides available before class. It's a good idea to print these off, read through them and then use them as the basis of your notes. When you're in a lecture, only write down key points. Instead of focusing on writing, focus on listening. As you listen, compare what you're hearing with what you already know about the topic and note down any significant differences. After the lecture, it's a good idea to discuss it with a study buddy. You'll have focused on different aspects of the lecture and by discussing it, you'll strengthen your understanding of the topic. There are also a number of ways that you can be more active in tutorials. For example, you need to be prepared to contribute. This means doing the readings and attending the lecture, then thinking about how the information in each is similar and different and how your previous experience contributes to your knowledge of the subject. Think of any questions you have about the topic. Then, when you go to the tutorial, you'll be better able to contribute to the discussion. You can do this by agreeing or disagreeing with a point that has already been made, or you could ask or answer a question. Be prepared to share your point of view and listen to what others say. Think about how they're contributing to your knowledge. It's important that everyone contributes to discussions in tutorials. Imagine if they didn't. Then it would just be your tutor lecturing, which might mean that you can relax, but it's not a good way of getting the most out of a tutorial. When everyone contributes, we get a much richer understanding of the topic as we all have different information to add to the discussion. By being an active learner, you'll also be an effective learner. Research has shown that people only remember 10% of what they read. 
They remember 20% of what they hear, 30% of what they see, 50% of what they see and hear, but they remember 70% of what they say and write, and 90% of what they do. By using a variety of these strategies, you'll remember and understand more. You'll also develop a richer understanding of the topic, retain more knowledge and develop your own ideas. By learning actively, you'll also learn more effectively and efficiently, meaning you won't need to cram for exams. In essence, you'll be saving time and reducing stress in the long run. The second step to studying smarter rather than harder is to have a smart routine. Many people find it easier to get tasks done when they have an established routine. For example, many authors set a goal of writing a certain number of words each day and they keep working until they've achieved that goal. Having a smart routine will help you manage your time and will also help you avoid procrastination. Here's what procrastination looks like. Before I study, I need to warm up by checking my email and Facebook. Really? I heard checking emails first makes it harder to focus on studying. You should use email and Facebook as a reward after you've done some work. Yeah, but I've also got to watch the voice. <laughs> what? How else am I going to get on that show? Look, you can be on the voice next year when you finish your studies. But I work better when I have lots of things to do. No, you don't. I really work well under pressure. <laughs> you only think you do because that's the only time you do anything. If you started assignments earlier, you'd learn more and get more marks. But I got 65 on my last assignment and did it the night before. <sighs> I give up. There are many reasons we procrastinate. Fear that we won't be able to do the task, lack of interest in the topic, or feeling overwhelmed by the scale of the task are just a few. There are some simple ways to stay on track, get your work done, and still have plenty of time for other things in life. First of all, you need to get the balance right. It's easy to put study off and focus on all the other things in your life, family, friends, sport, religion, paid work, and hobbies, for example. This may be fun in the short term, but at the end of semester you're going to be stressed about exams and won't do as well as you could have. On the other hand, some people think they have to study all the time, and they neglect other aspects of their life. This doesn't work either. Students get burnt out, don't study effectively, and start to resent their studies. The best thing is to ensure that you have a healthy balance of study and other activities. One way to achieve this is to plan your time. Try using a free co-op or planner or the Study Smarter weekly planner. By planning your week, you can ensure that you study enough and have time for other things too. This brings us to our third and final top tip. Set goals. In terms of your study, you'll have long-term or macro goals and short-term micro goals. Macro goals include long-term, big-picture goals, things like completing all your assignments by the due date, getting distinctions for all your units for the semester, aiming to do honours, or the direction you ultimately want your career to go in. Micro goals include those goals which you can achieve in the short term, things like reading a chapter of your textbook, getting a distinction for your next assignment, or practising for a tutorial presentation. These are the kinds of things that you should include on a weekly planner. Micro goals need to be achievable and measurable. For example, if you put study biology in your weekly planner, can you achieve this in an hour? How do you know you are successful? On the other hand, if you put something like summarize 10 pages of chapter one, or find three sources for biology assignment, you know you can do this in the given time. By setting goals and achieving them, you'll feel motivated, enjoy your studies more, and this will help you get better marks. So don't forget, to maximise the benefits of studying, you should activate your learning by using a variety of active learning strategies, 
establish a smart routine, and set achievable goals. For more study tips and advice, visit the UWA Study Smarter website.